Welcome, welcome. This is According to Callus. This is episode 242. And we're going to begin the first of a three-part series entitled Things the Hippies Got Right. So in part one, we're going to talk about their fear of government. Most specifically, the FBI. Now you wonder, could this be a coincidence? No, no, no. I I decided to do this, uh, maybe not specifically this episode, but this issue, uh, before the latest outrage courtesy of the FBI. But the hippies... And, of course, I'm using a raw generalization. Not every hippie, not all the way, thought the same thing. Right, right. Okay, whatever. This is, after all, according to Callus, and everything said here is my opinion, my understanding, and my thoughts on a matter. If I get something wrong and somebody could show me that, I'm happy to say, okay, yeah, I got that wrong. This is what happened. If somebody just has a difference of opinion, that's fine. You're allowed to have a difference of opinion. In this case... My differences of opinion with our hippie friends are no longer a difference. They were right. They were right to conclude that the FBI acts like a secret police. They were right to conclude that they abuse people, that they abuse their privilege of authority, that, quite frankly, they abuse the Constitution and they mistreat people. No, I I know, I know. You're going to tell me there's lots of good agents and they were just following orders. Yeah, that didn't work in Nuremberg either. But I digress. So I want to say that, uh, full disclosure, part of what prompted this, uh, the fear of government and kind of tilting towards the FBI is I stumbled upon Mr. Ben Shapiro. He was on a local station here. Now I got to admit, I'm vaguely familiar with who the guy is. Uh, I know he's probably about 20 years younger than me and he's far more accomplished than I am. And, uh, I don't begrudge him any of that. And apparently he's an Orthodox Jew that's basically a libertarian in his own words. Okay, that's all good. But he gets a lot of things wrong, in my opinion. And for everything he gets right, there's one or two things he gets wrong from what I've seen. Now, if somebody can prove me wrong, go for it. I don't hate the guy. I don't know the guy. I don't have a strong opinion on the guy once, one way or another. I just know that On the grand scale of things, he's usually right. But on the things where it's like, oh, you got to make a decision here. He makes mistakes from time to time, just like we all do. Nobody's perfect. And even a broken clock is right twice a day. So he was talking about the idea that Andrew McCabe was on local, I'm sorry, that was on a news station. And then he referenced the fact that Andrew McKay was basically fired just before his retirement because he was a bad agent. Yet the guy's always on TV, apparently. And he was talking about how Andrew McKay might be right, that there are a lot of people that are upset with the FBI, that they don't quite, or they don't quite trust the FBI. They see the FBI as the enemy. And I think Mr. Shapiro might have equated that as he, he may be right or he, he may be accurate in that statement. And he even went so far as to say they have a part to play in that scenario. But what he didn't do, at least not what I heard, I mean, I, I only listened to the one segment because I was doing other stuff, uh, namely I was at work. I don't think he went on the offensive. I don't think he explained just how we got where we're at. The FBI, in my opinion... Be that as it may, there might be lots of good agents there, but the FBI as an organization no longer serves the American public, no longer serves the oath that they took, no longer behaves as if there is a constitution, no longer behaves restrained. In fact, I would not find it hard to believe that at some point in the future, some of us are going to be rounded up by that same organization saying that we're a threat to the United States. I reject that. Completely, but he didn't really say that the reason why you guys are held in disrepute, the way that we got to the fact that we don't regard the FBI in a positive light is because of their own behaviors, 
Their own actions and inactions have brought us to this point. Now, when I was a little kid, I mean, we got to hear and see about Elliot Ness, the untouchables, and all these great things the FBI did to rid us of organized crime and how they fought against the communists under J. Edgar Hoover. And that may have all been true, but that was also 60 years ago. What have they done lately? For those of you in sales, you've probably heard that very same phrase. Well, what have you done this month? The idea that we get a a free pass to the FBI forever because once upon a time they did good things is laughable. Now, Shapiro also said there's never ever a time where we can justify violence. Now, I find that hard to believe. Well, one, I know that he said, or was quoted at some point, and I'm going to paraphrase because I don't remember. Again, it's I don't pay that close attention to this guy. But if you were going to indoctrinate my children, I'll either need to leave the country or take up arms. Well, what exactly does it mean to take up arms? If you're not willing to bring about direct action through violence, what exactly does taking up arms mean? Now, there's a time for self-defense. In fact, I think it's always an appropriate time for self-defense. And I'm not suggesting anybody take any action on any FBI agent or facility. That would be foolish. That would be stupid. That would be not well thought out. Then he put in the standard proviso about all these good agents that are still there and they were just following orders. I find it ironic, at least a little bit. That a guy that's obviously descended from Judaism, from I believe Lithuania, I if I don't got that right, forgive me, but Eastern Europe somewhere would say that they were just following orders. Really? Really? I can think of about 6 million people that were either your family's countrymen or your family's co-religionists that would say otherwise. But far be it for me to criticize a young Jewish man. I'm criticizing his thought, his statement. Again, I don't know the guy. The guy's far more successful than I am. Kudos to him. I appreciate that. But when a guy gets something wrong, and I may have misunderstood him, I, I mean, he may have added more to it later. I, I didn't really hear that. But when he laid that out, I, I got to say, I was taken aback. And to the notion that there are thousands of good agents out there, they were just following orders. They were just doing what they were told. No. In the military, you're called upon to reject illegal orders. You are expected to not follow orders that are in violation of the UCMJ, of the U.S. Constitution. You're expected to do that. As a professional FBI agent, I would say the same responsibility lays upon you. Now, I know you're all concerned about your pensions, your retirement plans, your benefits. I get it. You're just like every other government employee. I get it. But when somebody's telling you to do something that violates people's rights, that violates the Constitution, that is an affront to all that is decent, and quite frankly, your oath, it's your responsibility to say no. In fact, I would even go so far as to say it's your responsibility to arrest that supervisor. But if you're not willing to do that, okay, resign. Get a different job. Because clearly you're not up to the task. Perhaps you can go to the IRS. I mean, they're looking for armed agents now too. Not sure why. I'm sure it has nothing to do with the fact that they're going to go and extort people. They're going to put taxpayers, tax collectors in the same stratosphere as they were back in Roman times. Which means that we might have to handle it like they did in colonial times. Read into that what you want. The other thing I recall him saying, or I recall the thought being, is that never before have the people been so upset with the FBI. Well, yeah, 
Never before has the FBI behaved in the manner that they've behaved. Now, we expect this out of the ATF. I mean, we've seen the ATF abuse people in their rights for decades, and yet the ATF is still around. It hasn't been defunded. It hasn't been disbanded. So now the FBI gets in on the act because apparently they need more funding. Who knows? Now, I would tell you that I am not a fan of the defund the police movement, but I could really get behind defund the FBI. Disband the ATF. I really could. In fact, I could even go so far as to disband the NSA. Disband all those alphabet soup agencies, starting with the IRS. The Bureau of Land Management. OSHA. The EPA. None of these organizations have a right to exist by the Constitution as it's written or understood, yet they still are here and they're eating out our substance. And we tolerate it. Why do we tolerate it? Because we like an ordered society. Because we like the safety and security that we perceive that they offer us. But at what point are we going to come up to the fact, to the realization that that's not the case? That they're actually the source of far more problems than they solve. Now, I'm not suggesting anarchy would be the better option. I'm not suggesting that do away with all law enforcement and everything will be good. No, because we know that men are not inherently good. Or women, for that matter. Just in case you weren't sure. In fact, the heart is deceitful above all things, right? That's what we as Christians believe. Now, if you're not a Christian, okay, fine. But even as a non-Christian, you ought to be able to look at the things and see, well, yeah, they're just jerks. And understand that those same people, when you put a badge on them, do not somehow become special and above the board and always doing the right thing. Now, for you agents out there that are actually following your oath, that are professionals and are doing the right thing, whether there's 1% or 49%, because I don't believe it's more than 50%. I'm sorry, I just don't. Whether it's 1% or 49%, kudos to you. Appreciate what you do. I appreciate the sacrifices that some of you make in the course of your daily duties. But I need you to speak up. I need you to say, this is wrong and we ought not be doing this. I don't want you going on TV and crying about how you're mistreated by your neighbors because they don't like the FBI anymore. Or how they look at you as if you're a tax collector. I'm sorry. Your organization brought that upon you. We did not. Most of us generally have no thoughts whatsoever about the FBI, the ATF, Bureau of Land Management, OSHA, any of you organizations. We don't give it any thought because you don't affect us in our day-to-day lives. And most of us are quite content and happy about that situation. But when it becomes obvious that you're being used as a political tool, as jackboots, as Gestapo people, and you do nothing to stop it, we rightfully conclude you might be the enemy. You might be the problem. Now, we got this Merrick Garland cat. Thank God he didn't get on Supreme Court. But he's running around saying, how dare you question this group? Or how dare you question these government employees? Really? Really? You're going to defend all government employees? You're going to say they're all perfect and all do a good job? You don't want to allow any grace for the general public saying, hey, you know what? Those five or six agents over there, they're terrible. You're not willing to accept that maybe just 10% of your organization is rotten to the core and needs to be dealt with? You're not willing to possibly accept that somebody made a mistake and you ought to, I don't know, look in the mirror before you judge everybody else? Merrick Garland? Look, I can be as animated as I want. I can be as vocally disturbed at their actions as I want. But the moment I cross the line and I take direct action of any sort, I am doing exactly what they want. 
I have given them what they desire, an excuse to come lock me up, abuse me, ruin me. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to cross that line. I know where my line is. And I can't promise you that I won't defend myself and my family. But we're a long way from where I'm willing to do that. I took an oath. I take it very seriously and it does not expire. But much like the founding fathers before me, I don't long for a war. I don't long for a civil war or a revolution. I think both would be disastrous. I think the outcome is unknown. I think likely the results of that would be catastrophic and I don't wish that on anybody. And I willingly will endure a certain amount of tyrant or tyrannical behavior. Excuse me. I will willingly endure their tyrannical behavior to a point. But those chains are getting heavy. The iron ball around my ankle is starting to slow me down. I can't envision a bright future for these United States. I just can't. We can pretend and we can say, oh, it'll all be better. But the harsh reality is pretty much every fear that the hippies had has come true. And in a stinging irony of all of it is the people that are roughly the same age of the hippies are the ones running these organizations. They're the ones giving cover for the bad behavior. They're the one giving excuses saying why it's okay for this person. They're the ones that are telling us, oh, don't pay attention here. There's nothing to see. Where are those hippies? Where are the people that were, I don't know, 20 when I was born, 25 when I was a toddler, maybe even 30 when I was in grade school? Where are those people? They're the ones that are on the top of the food chain right now and they're not doing anything because they got their little piece of power. They got theirs. You know, those former hippies, many of them did very well for themselves. So they just forgot about all their fears. Well, it's now their organization and they run it. They have nothing to fear. I wonder how many of those 70 year old former hippies go home at night and look in the mirror and say, what have I become? Did I not become the monster that I warned everyone else about 50 years ago? 40 years ago. Did I not become my own worst enemy? Now, you former hippies out there, if any of you are hearing my voice, you got to be thinking, ah, oh, this callous guy, he doesn't know what he's talking about. He's just blustering. He's making stuff up. Am I? Are you sure? Are you entirely comfortable with what's gone on in our country for the last 25 years? When you guys were on top, you guys were running things. You guys had... The correct fear. You had questioned the people that needed to be questioned. You had a certain amount of, hmm, let's say it, reverence for the way you understood the Constitution. For the way you defined liberty and freedom. Yet, it appears that now, all these years later, you don't really care because you got yours. How many of you had children? How many of you have grandchildren? Aren't you the least bit concerned about your posterity? Aren't you the least bit worried about what kind of country you left for them? I mean, as former hippies, you knew not to trust the government. You knew the problem raised by growing centralized power. Yet you set that all aside. Some of you took over the reins of power and you thought, well, I'll make it better. If I'm in charge, things will never go wrong. Yet clearly that's not the case. I mean, I got to say, I I don't exactly hold the boomers in high esteem, but you didn't get everything wrong. 
There were plenty of things that you were good about and that you got the right mindset with. I certainly appreciate a lot of your movies and your music and your and some even your books, but doggone it. How can you stand by and be okay with this? Did you not ever study any of the history that you said you were concerned about? Do you not know how things play out when power gets centralized to a certain point? Have you not considered what happened in Czechoslovakia after World War II? What happened in Poland, Lithuania, Latvia, Estonia, Yugoslavia, Japan? Oh, I'm not supposed to talk about that because those were allies. Oh, how about Germany? Especially East Germany. What about Finland? None of these countries had a good outcome by instituting the very plans that you talk about. Oh, I know you talk about benign Sweden and Norway and Denmark and how things are so grand for them. Okay. There's some good things over there. You're right. But they had us paying for the lion's share of their defense, keeping the Soviet Union at bay. And hey, you know what? The Soviet Union's gone. You would think we could go back to, I don't know, only having five carrier groups instead of 11 or whatever the number is now. I don't know, having 300 ship Navy instead of a 900 ship Navy. And I don't know what the real number is. So please don't pass to me with that. Well, I don't know. We don't really need a standing army of a couple million people, do we? And I don't know what the number is. Why are we in 140 plus countries? Why do we have a base everywhere in the world? Why? Because we're trying to make the whole world like the United States. I'm quite frankly surprised that anybody thinks that's a good idea at this point. I mean, we've had the central government be working on the idea of making the entire country like the Northeast, like New England, for over 150 years. How's that working for us? They're trying to globalize our country now, but before that, they were trying to Yankeeize it, trying to homogenize the entire country so there would be no uniqueness, no regional displays of autonomy. No, you can't have that. You must all submit. Yet the hippies had it right until they took power. Maybe the real answer is here is power corrupts. And absolute power corrupts absolutely. That was Lord Acton. And the hippies, they were aware of it until they took power. They had legitimate concerns about it until it was them. I ask, where are you at? What are you doing? You know, I I became aware of a song. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take a moment here and look it up, make sure I can do it justice here. But I became aware of this song a couple years back. Um, I was listening to another podcast, a guy by the name of Jack, and apparently somebody made him aware of it. And, you know, it's it's by a band that's not unknown. They're a bunch of hippies, right? And uh, they wrote a song basically going through their understanding of American history. And while I don't know that I necessarily feel good about their way of reviewing it, They've got a point. They got a few things correct. And they talk about the spirit of America. And how the people that came here wanted to be a part of that. The song's actually broken into three parts. Monster, suicide, and America, right? And at the end, they're calling us to go back to what we said what we thought we believed, right? Now, Brian McClanahan often cautions on the idea of the notion that we are a nation on a principle, that we're, that we're based on this idea, right? The preposition nation, or proposition nation, excuse me, preposition, propositional nation. He says the neocons get it wrong all the time. They fall into the trap and they get conflated with the 1619 project in this, right? This idea that this all men are created equal, this whole big proposition that this is a myth, that the people came here for a specific idea. That's not true. They came here for various reasons, but they came here to find their own way, to be successful. And they, they were nations within a nation. And the idea that we amalgamate all together. So that band was Steffenwolf, right? 
Now I know them best for the Magic Carpet Ride and a couple other songs. And I was kind of shocked when I saw this song by them. I, I was like, are you kidding me? But wow, I mean, Born to be Wild, the Magic Carpet Ride. I mean, and then you've got that. And it really took me aback because they're laying out a good argument that we're putting ourselves in a bad situation. How do we fix this? Maybe we ought to consider what, I don't know, our guiding principles were. Yet we did nothing. And this was a hippie band, essentially. And they were trying to warn you. I mean, and I'm going to reference a couple other hippie songs when I get into these other uh, episodes. But this is just part one. One of three of things the hippies got right. And they had a natural fear of government. And I'm using the example of the FBI. Don't even get me started on B-A-T-F-E. IRS. OSHA. Bureau Land Management. Pick your topic. All these organizations have no business existing, much less destroying our country. Under the guise of keeping us safe and secure. With that, this is the end of episode 242. The Hippies Got It Right, part one. If you thought this was, I don't know, somewhat entertaining, enjoyable, educational, infuriating. Take the time. Like, share the show. Subscribe. (coughs) Excuse me. Do a review. Let the people know I'm out here. I'm in Collin County, Texas. Been here 25 years. I don't plan on going anywhere, but we got to fight the good fight. We got to get our message out. That means that we have to be just a little bit open-minded and a little bit more aggressive. With that, I will see you on the other side.